Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Matthew Holiday with First Hand Weather. Uh, this is the first time I've done a video in about five years. I think the last time I did a video, which I may be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure it was on a snowstorm that was supposed to hit the southeast. Parts of the southeast definitely did get hit, but just not where I was at. So we were supposed to get about a foot of snow. Actually, maybe even a little more than that in uh, upstate South Carolina, but also south of I-85. And, and locals, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you don't get that kind of snowfall uh, in South Carolina, especially south of I-85. But it happened, or it didn't happen, actually. Um, I think I got it, ended up with maybe a dusting of snow. And yeah, maybe expect a foot, foot of snow and get a dusting. So that was about typical. So that's how the last video went. Um, but I do want to start these discussions back, uh, doing the forecast discussions through video. It's not meant to replace the uh, the the articles that I that I do more often, but uh, there is value in doing these. I feel like, and and I can go a little bit more in depth, and hopefully keep your attention a little bit longer than than I can in some of the articles. Um, so we have a big event happening tomorrow, big nor'easter that's uh, going to to develop uh, along the east coast, move up uh, into parts of the mid Atlantic, and then. Uh, impact parts of New England and uh, it's something we've been watching for several days now uh, the uh, original short wave it moved uh, into uh, the west coast region uh, back you know, a couple days ago and it has since dug into the four corners region uh, moved into the southern and central plains and now it's kind of coming in the, an east northeastward direction toward the mid-south mississippi valley um, and so on and so forth southeast and, and it'll continue on that on that same similar tra trajectory until until it's moving more northeastward so uh, parts of the south are already getting precipitation from this um, so what will happen is a short wave continues moving uh, east, uh, northeast, a surface low will develop in, along the Gulf Coast, and then uh, eventually that low, when you hear in the next few hours, you know, early, um, you know, Wednesday morning, uh, that low will then uh, redevelop off the uh, southeast coast, somewhere around Virginia, off the Virginia, North Carolina coast, or somewhere right along there. And uh, the, the big question has been uh, where this was going to track. What, what's the exact track that, uh, that the surface low is, is going to take? Um, and the, I, I suspected, and I, and I talked about this in an article last night before the models were really starting to trend northwestward or, um, with, the, with the surface low. Um, I talked about how uh, there, there could be a bit of a northwestward uh, jog, so I kind of went with some of the models uh, that, that were more northwest with uh, the area of, of highest snowfall accumulations that were expected. And so the models have since trended in that direction. They could honestly continue to trend more, even more northwestward. Uh, tomorrow, which I mean, we're getting it at the point where it's just going to be a now cast. But um, anyway, uh, so I, I do want to share my forecast I've come up with. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to take a look at the at some of the model guidance to get you an idea, give you some idea on timing. I know you've seen a ton of snowfall maps, and I'll show different things, and you're probably like, none of this is none of this is going to pan out, and. I mean, it will, but maybe not exactly like what we're forecasting. Who knows? But um, anyway, so the you know, like I said, we'll have a low that will develop. And I think I originally said uh, early morning, but it'll actually be more toward the Wednesday afternoon. And uh, and showing you the RGEM model, so it's one of the short range models that we look at. Um, and uh, as you can see, you by let me go back just a minute. Um, so by early Wednesday morning, sunrise, uh, you start to get uh, some ice and uh, sleet, mostly freezing rain in North Carolina, uh, and then up into parts of Virginia. 
But then you see that snow uh, starts to develop across uh, the mid-Atlantic and, uh, you know, just a, just a bit away from the coast. And then as we make it through the afternoon, uh, you can you can see that low. Uh, so we got a, a thousand millibar low at this point, uh, moving over the kind of the Delmarva Peninsula. And the big thing to, to and and this is one thing that I want to point out. You know these little details in track may seem just completely insignificant, but. The, it's the it's honestly the difference between New York City getting over a foot of snow or just a couple of inches with rain, you know, um, and that, that's why it's so important not to look or you know to look at model guidance and and take it verbatim. It, it's you know it's it's there's a lot of value in in kind of looking for clues, uh, using expertise to say, hey, like that kind of doesn't look right or, you know, the models might not be picking up on this or that and so on and so forth. And that's when we saw this trend. But anyway, we're talking about what's going to happen at this point. Uh, I'll get back into the other stuff in a second. But, um, but you know, as we get into, so this is, we'll go back a little bit. So this is, this is getting into er overnight into early Thursday morning. This would be around sunrise on Thursday. Um, but as you can see, and, and th this would be late Thursday morning, um, at least according to this model, and the NAM shows this as well, we're getting a lot more liquid precipitation along uh, the, uh, you know, right around Cape Cod, Long Island, uh, even New York City, uh, there's even some question as far as like how much snowfall a fit place like Philly will get. Um, and it doesn't even look like, I mean, and, it, and this has been pretty apparent over the last day or so that this was not going to be too big of a deal uh, for the D.C. area. Um, they may get a big, uh, a lot of, you know, pretty heavy snow initially, but it'll probably start to transition. And I'll go ahead and show you this. Is, so we're going to look just in the low levels of the atmosphere. And uh, is, you can see, and I know this is kind of confusing, but I'll, I'll explain it. Let me back up here again. Um, so what happens is this, uh, is this low surface low begins to take shape. It starts, you see these like red colors. This is indicating, you know, warm air uh, temperature advection. Essentially what's happening is this, this you know, entire, the cyclonic uh, system, which is um, counterclockwise, is wrapping around uh, warm air. And we have this surface high up to the north, and, and that's responsible, has been responsible for funneling in a lot of the colder air that uh, is really going to to be one component of this event that allows it to play out and be a big winter storm. Um, so when you have cold air at the surface and then you start to advect or transport warmer air um, into a region and it's because of the direction of the winds that you're transporting that warmer air, it, it goes up and over the colder air. And uh, this warm air advection can actually be a really good thing if you really want heavy uh, snowfall rates. And there are other things to take into account, especially like, you know, your region of, of you know, lift, sufficient lift in the atmosphere and all this other stuff. Um, but, you know, the, this warm air advection actually can enhance snowfall rates. But your profile, so your, your you know, you take a slice through the atmosphere, it needs to stay below freezing or, or at least uh, drop at or below freezing in order to get uh, that snowfall. And so when you have warm air advection that's going to be this strong, um, you know, there are, and if you're looking for snow in places like Long Island and, and New York City and, and right along the coast, you get to a point where, you know, this is going to be so strong, the low is going to track 
close enough to the to the coast to where temperatures um, just above the surface will probably go above freezing so there will be that transition to sleet and and maybe even freezing rain and it's even possible that temperatures uh, could even go uh, above freezing at the surface and, and kind of erode away some of that that colder air uh, that's at the surface and so and, and the reason we were concerned about this happening is when we were looking at the global models the gfs and the european model and and all of that you know they they give us some hints of what the overall pattern could look like. Um, but before we got into the range of, of being able to look at the, the shorter range models, uh, the essentially what happens is when you, when you have a, a surface low pressure system that develops in response to one of these short waves, then you know you you get the precipitation that goes along with that and 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 all of the other elements and uh when you when you go from that phase change from uh from from water vapor to a liquid see so cloud development and and um the cloud development and then you know rain droplets and frozen precipitation and all that that phase change from water vapor uh, to to liquid or even straight from water vapor to, to ice there's heat that that phase change results in heat latent heat being released into the atmosphere that that process and so then you get this as a result you, you get this ridge that develops downstream of the of the of the the short wave and that itself has an influence on the track so you know it's kind of it's kind of crazy how this goes back and forth so it's like well the the features in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere that was responsible for the development of the surface slow then the, you know essentially gets influenced by the surface slow itself because of the precipitation and whatnot this this being uh, produced and and so uh, it, it looks like that, you know, at least in, according to the shorter range models, and, and this is what we suspected, that uh, the, the downstream ridge is going to be a bit stronger. Um, and what that'll do as a result, and I, I'll show you this, I'll show you some trends in the model guidance to, to help me. I don't know if any of this is making sense, but um, if we go back... I won't make this video too long, so I'm kind of winging it a little bit here because I had, like I said, I haven't done these videos in a while. But okay, so let's go back. So this would be so you're looking at uh, 500 millibars, uh, 500 millibar geopotential height. So this is, to, to put it in simple terms, this is what we're using to, to identify. Uh, our troughs and our ridges and, and, and that kind of thing. So the short wave that I'm talking about. So you can see at, so 12Z Wednesday, which is, a, is Wednesday morning, this short wave is, is pretty much centered over the Mid-South. But then if you go downstream, you can see that there is this ridge that ha has will have developed um, and it, it's already developed at this point but um, it it will have developed and and in response to the um, processes that are going on due to the latent heat release and all of that and so this doesn't so you look at this saying why does this even matter like you know why is he rambling on about troughs and ridges but I want to show you this you can pick one of these. So these are lines of constant geopotential height. I won't get into you know what all of that means, the intricate details. But if you take this 546 line and you look and you say, okay, well that runs up right above New York. So here's our ridge that runs up like that. We we'll go back in time and look at some of these previous model runs. So this was initialized. You know this is the latest R RGEM, and you go back. Let's go back a few. We're going to look at how this trends. Okay, well, we'll go back a little bit. So keep an eye on that five uh, five forty six over uh, New England. 
I've gone back a few runs. Okay, let's start moving forward. Notice how that line starts to nudge up. And that's indicative of a later, you know, our later runs showing a stronger ridge. And that does one of two things, and, and you know, it, it slows down the, the overall system. Uh, the short wave will be slower, and you can actually see that um, to an extent here, I guess, where as we move forward, the, the wave ends up being a little bit farther back at this point in time. And but the ridge is stronger, and what and what that does. The, the, the second thing that I wanted to bring up is uh, it it um, will result in the surface low itself moving closer to the coast. So yeah, there's a meteor, you know, a little bit of meteorology for you uh, for those that were interested. So let's talk about a little bit of what these uh, um, models are outputting as far as. Uh, snowfall. There are different ways to um, use this to calculate. You know, you you look at precipitation, um, and uh, you you can use different methods uh, to uh, determine what the the snowfall amounts will be. Um, and so, I'll just show you using a simple ten to one ratio. Uh, that might not be spot on. I'm about to show you my forecast, so just hang with me. I just want to show you a little bit of the difference in, in what the models are showing. And so let's just back up a little bit. So this is from the RGEM still. Let's go ahead and fast forward through. This will be Thursday afternoon at this point. So snowfall between now and Thursday afternoon. And so you can see, like, over D.C., really not that big of a deal. Um, you know, maybe some ice and whatnot, but it'll probably be a transition transition to sleet, uh, freezing rain, and then rain. So that'll cut back on the accumulations. Um, so this is showing, I mean, you've got a spot here in Pennsylvania that's, you know, northeastern Pennsylvania that's showing 30 inches of snow using a 10 to 1 ratio. And, and this this... 10 to 1 ratio business is, is essentially equates to, okay, for every inch of liquid equivalent uh, precipitation. So, you know, what would be rain, for example, uh, that would be, you know, for one, for uh, every one inch of uh, rain, that transla translates to 10 inches of snow. And so you, you're getting some pretty hefty totals. And honestly, that's not unrealistic. Um, so as as I was saying, we'll, we'll have that really strong warm warm air invection. Uh, we'll have the lift from the short wave itself. Uh, we'll have ample moisture. And that warm air invection, it's, I mean, they're far enough inland based on the, on the expected track of the low where that's just going to help enhance uh, snowfall rates. It's not, um, you know, their temperatures won't warm uh, to above freezing at any level of the atmosphere or the troposphere. And so, uh, New York, and you can see that there's a sharp cutoff, uh, where, you know, over New York city, you had these really high totals. I'm really skeptical of that. I think it could be a lot lower than that, but we'll see how it pans out. Uh, you get this sharp cutoff where, you know, uh, Eastern parts of Long Island really get considerably less snow than western parts and, and then in new york city and then you see kind of the same thing in cape, in cape cod so this is what the rgem is showing if we look at the nam the three kilometer nam uh, you get something that is a little bit similar but you know you know here is still showing hefty totals uh in uh in dc um but you got to take into account well hang on so you've got to take into account that, uh, you know, this is likely not going to be all snow. And so those totals would definitely not, will definitely not be that high. At least I don't think that they will be. Uh, the big maxima in totals in uh, eastern uh, Pennsylvania might actually pan out. Um, totals are probably, could potentially be overdone in New York City. You've got some pretty high totals even in the southern Jersey. Um, I think Boston will be a pretty big 
uh, hot spot for heavier. You know, they're going to be kind of on the line, but I think that they still will be a pretty big hot spot for uh, the uh, heavier heavier accumulations. And then you even get with this northern trend in the track, um, even up in the main now. And I, I think that those totals look pretty good as well. I think I'm going a little less than that for now. I'll just I'll update the, the my forecast if I need to, um, which you haven't seen yet. <laughs> um, and then this is what the latest European model was showing. Uh, so uh, it you know it still had a reasonable amount in the DC area, but you see that your greater totals are up in the northern northern and western Virginia, and up in the West Virginia, and then across uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Philly again those days showing about eight inches that's probably overdone showing 13.6 for New York City probably overdone um, and then you know really cuts off that uh, those heavier mounts as you get up into Maine um, with the northern track you're probably going to see some heavier totals uh, not depicted um, in this region that's not depicted by the European model um, and then you know kind of a sharp cut off because of that surface high uh, that'll be kind of you know wrapping around some drier air so with that said let me see if there's anything else that I want to show you oh yeah so this was the forecast in the article I put out last night uh, there have been some modifications so I said uh, Washington DC one to three, that still look, looks good um, for now. Philly, three to six, I, I guess that they're kind of on my, in my new forecast in, in the kind of on the line, the three to six and, and the one to three. New York City, probably three to six is still a good forecast. And then Long Island, one to three. Uh, Providence, they may get 12 to 18, but th with the northern uh, shift, uh, northwestern shift in the track, that heavier, heavy, those heavier accumulations might be slightly northwest of there. Boston, 12 to 18, I think that still looks, it looks pretty good. I think that if they don't get above a foot, they, they will certainly get close, and then Cape Cod, 1 to 3. And I know last night when I wrote this, the models weren't, weren't agreeing with such low amounts uh, in, in Cape Cod, but I, I'm glad that I, I, I forecasted those amounts um, under the assumption that the, that that downstream ridge would be a little bit, or would be a bit stronger. Um, so I'll just pan over and show my forecast and I, I'll go ahead and, and increase the size of this. And so uh, Wednesday through Thursday, um, so it's Tuesday evening when I put out the forecast, I put together this forecast, um, widespread one to three inches over into the into Ohio, long and north of the Ohio River. And so uh, this, uh, you know, we've got this big uh, kind of maxima of 12 to 18 inches. I didn't quite expand that into uh, Boston in my in my latest update, um, so you know they're kind of on the line with that six to twelve. So they they could get close to a foot, but uh, we'll just have to see. Um, you know, especially if we see more of a northwestern track, then then this whole kind of area shifts a little bit. Um, you know, Long Island, you know, really one to three, Cape Cod one to three. New York City kept them into three to six, kept Philly, well, you know, they're kind of on that one to three to three to six um, zone. They're right on the line there. But across, you know, parts of Pennsylvania, this 18 to 24 inch uh, plus forecast, I think, could verify. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if localized areas get 30 inches. Um, and, and this could shift here and there a little bit just based on track. I mean, we can only get this, we can only forecast this so well, to be honest. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at. I did extend uh, those three to six inch totals uh, into uh, southeastern Maine uh, and then western parts of Maine as well and even nudged a, a six to 12 inch area into parts of Maine, into a small part of Maine. 
So overall, happy with the forecast so far. I uh, just made a few uh, modifications. Of course, I'll make a few modifications uh, tomorrow morning if I need to. Um, one last thing that I do want to bring up uh, that is the fact that there could be some icing. I had already had, had briefly brought this up about uh, North, I think I did, about North Carolina potentially getting some ice. But this could actually extend down into uh, the upstate of South Carolina as well. So if we look at, so this is uh, a total accumulated freezing rain uh, forecast for uh, according to the NAM, the three kilometer NAM, I believe. And so you can see that these do get down into the upstate of South Carolina. And, and some of these totals are pretty impressive. Uh, what, you know, so we have the, we have cold air damming. So we had the high, uh, to the North and, and it's, um, you know, it's kind of set up this wedge, you know, it's pretty common, uh, this, cold air wedge that's that's down close to the surface uh, uh, east of the Appala Appalachian Mountains. And so uh, as that low starts to develop off the southeast coast, what will happen is uh, the warm air advection, so that warmer air will be transported uh, into this air into this region, but it will actually go over that cold air dome, and so the this ice. This is why it won't be snow. I mean, it might be at the very very beginning, but uh, you know, overnight tonight uh, into the early morning hours. It, I mean, there could be some you know fairly hefty icing accumulations. This will be freezing rain. Uh, eventually, that that cold air layer at the surface will, will erode as you get more warm air advection into the region and then also as that as that low you know kind of gets organized uh, you're not going to get that nice uh, northeasterly flow um, uh, that we have been getting to, to result in that wedge in, in the area uh, it, you'll, it'll influence the wind speed or the wind direction at the surface and, and we'll kind of cut off that source of, of cold air. So a transition rain will eventually happen, but really I say even, even if you're in Northeast Georgia, even along I-85 all the way to, to Charlotte, even though this map really doesn't show it, uh, just, just be a little extra careful in the morning uh, and, and by the time you're watching this video, it, it might might even already th that this part of the event might already be over with. Um, you have to be careful with freezing rain just because you know it, it's liquid. You know it, kind of, it it falls as liquid and freezes on the surface. And uh, you, you know some, if you don't if you only get a glaze, it's hard to even know that it that it's even freezing rain. You might even think it's just a cold rain. So you just have to be careful with it. Just be aware it'll eventually melt. Uh, you know, sometime later in the morning, if, if if this is a bigger deal than farther south than what the mo what the models have been indicating, and then like I said, that's a real possibility down to about I eighty five into the upstate and then into into Charlotte as well. So that's what I have for you. I think this video has gone to thirty minutes. Okay, um, I think it's thirty minutes, but. Anyways, uh, well, I'll have additional updates uh, tomorrow, which I think Eastern time, sorry, midnight. So I'll have additional updates today um, after I wake up. So just uh, uh, just keep checking back on First and Weather Facebook page and all of that. And if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe, you know, and get future videos. So have a good night, everyone. Uh, we'll uh, pick up uh, on all of this tomorrow or today.